This is the second video in a series of videos about how to check the error assumptions for a linear regression model. In this video, we're going to focus on checking the mean zero error assumption. So the first question is, what exactly does it mean for the expected value of the errors to equal zero? Well, described in words, it simply means that the average deviation of each error from the true regression model should be equal to zero. But you may be wondering, what would that look like visually? So I have opened up a little, or I've created a little graphic here in R, and we have uh, a true regression line here. It's shown by this solid line moving from left to right. And for a specific error value, I've generated 10 values from the hypothetical error population. And this is just a sample, so there's going to be some random variation. But if you look at the average value of these deviations from the true regression line, the average is going to be pretty close to zero. And in the limit, or theoretically, the average value of all the potential deviations from the true regression line would equal zero. And that's true for every single error in your model. What's challenging about checking this assumption for a linear regression model is that, first of all, we don't observe the errors, we observe the residuals, but we only have a single residual for every single observation. So we can't check this assumption using a single residual. So to check this assumption, we have to look at the set of combined residuals. So how do we use these residuals to check the mean zero error assumption? Well, if the mean zero error assumption is reasonable, then a plot of the residuals versus fitted values or the residuals versus a set of regressor values xi should be approximately symmetric around a horizontal line at zero. Note that this check implicitly assumes that the structure of our model is correct and that the errors are uncorrelated. If those two assumptions are not met, then this may not be a great way of checking this assumption, but a plot of the residuals versus fitted values is the most common way of checking the mean zero error assumption. So we expect a symmetric pattern, pattern around zero if the errors are, do have mean zero. What do we expect if this assumption is violated? Well, if this assumption is violated, then we expect our residual plot to have a systematic asymmetric pattern deviating from zero. So I'm going to draw a couple of examples in the next couple of slides. So first we're going to talk about the kind of plot we would love to see if this assumption is satisfied. The null plot is the ideal plot we would like to see if the mean zero error assumption is satisfied. In the null plot, we have a plot of our residuals versus our fitted values or potentially a set of regressor values. It actually doesn't particularly matter. We have a horizontal reference line at zero, and we look at the deviations uh, of the residuals above that zero line and below the zero line. And what we want to see is that the pattern above the line is essentially symmetric with a pattern below the line. So this would be an example of a great null plot where we would have no evidence that the mean zero error assumption is violated. However, sometimes people think that the null plot is the only way this assumption is satisfied. And that's actually a little bit too strong. So you could have another situation where the residuals were symmetric around the regression line, but they may not be, they may not have constant thickness as they move from left to right along the y-axis. So in the second graphic, we once again have our residuals versus our fitted values. We have our horizontal reference line at zero. And now when we look at our residuals and how they deviate from the horizontal line at zero, we see that the pattern of the residuals is approximately symmetric around that zero line, but the thickness is not, is not constant as we, as we move from left to right along the x-axis. And so even though this is not a null plot, the deviations of the residuals around the zero line are essentially symmetric. And so we would once again have no evidence that the mean zero error assumption is violated. So what's an example of a plot where this assumption was violated? There are many residual plots I could draw that indicate that the mean zero error assumption is violated. However, they're all gonna have one common pattern, and that is that they asymmetrically deviate from zero around that zero line. So I'm gonna draw a residual plot once again. My residuals on the y-axis my fitted values on the x-axis, I have my horizontal reference line at zero, and I'm gonna draw a scatter of points here. And what we see here is that this scatter of points 
does not symmetrically deviate from the zero line. And so when I compare the pattern here to the pattern here, I don't see the residuals randomly bouncing above zero and below zero in a symmetrical pattern. And so I have these residuals that are all above the line. I have these residuals that are all below the line in different locations along the x-axis. And so the way that these residuals deviate from the zero line is not symmetric around zero. So what can you do if the mean zero error assumption is violated? Most of the time when this, is, when this assumption is violated, it means that there is a structural problem in your model. So there's something wrong with the way that your response relates to the regressors that you've included. So one solution would be transforming your response or transforming your predictors and seeing how that impacts the, the residual plots and whether the assumption is satisfied after, after making the transformation. It could include adding or deleting different predictive variables from your model. So if we saw a quadratic trend in our residual plot from the previous slides, then maybe we should add a quadratic term to our regression model and perhaps that would correct the non-constant, or sorry, the, the mean zero uh, areas, the mean zero error uh, violation. Um, and sometimes when the structure of your model is very complicated, you may actually need to consider a more advanced form of regression. It's possible that a simple or a, lim a linear regression model may not be adequate for modeling the data. That's actually pretty rare. Uh, usually it just means you need to, to work a little bit harder in building your model, but it can be really difficult with simple models to have the assumptions be satisfied. So you may be wondering, well, how do I construct these residual plots? How do I construct a plot of the residuals versus fitted values using statistical software like R? So in R, if we assume that our fitted model is contained in an object known as LMOD, there are several functions that we can use to help construct these residual plots to diagnose whether the mean zero error assumption is violated. So the first function I'm going to mention is the residual plot function, which is located within the car package. So it's not installed by default in R, so you need to download the car package, you need to load the car package before you use this function. But if you use residual plot and you give it the LMOD object, it will automatically construct a plot of the residuals versus fitted values. Another plot or another function which is very similar is the residual plots function within the car package. And when you use the residual plots function and give it your fitted linear model LMOD, it will construct a plot of the residuals versus fitted value, as well as a plot of the residuals versus each one of our predictors here. So this should actually be an AND right here. But it constructs plots of the residuals versus Y hat and the residuals versus each predictor. And there are some arguments that you can specify to only show the plots with the predictors, and that's what I'll do in the slides that you'll see shortly. Um, but this will give you all the plots that you would need to diagnose whether the mean zero error assumption is violated. Lastly, if you don't want to install the car package and you want to do this in a somewhat semi-automatic way, then you can actually use the plotting function on your fitted model LMOD, specifying the argument which equals one. And if you do that, it will actually construct a plot of the residuals versus the fitted values, as well as some additional supplementary information in the plot. So those are the three main functions that I would consider using to check the mean zero error assumption. So now let's look at an example uh, of real data. So we're going to use the savings data set that's in the fairway R package. And that data set has five savings related var variables for 50 countries that were averaged over the periods, uh, the, the years between 1960 and 1970. The response is the SR variable savings rate, and that is the personal savings divided by disposable income. Then we have four different predictors. POP15 is the percentage of the population under the age of 15. POP75 is the per percentage of the population over the age of 75. DPI is the per capita disposable income in dollars and DDPI is the percent growth rate of the DPI variable. So based on this data, the question that we want to answer is, is the mean zero error assumption reasonable for the model that regresses the savings rate variable on the other four variables that are in the data set? So the first thing that we do is we use the data function. We use the data function to load the savings data from the fairway package. And then we fit the model that regresses SR on all the other variables that are in the savings data frame. 
and we're going to store that in our fitted model in the lmod object. If I use the residual plot function on the lmod object, this is the plot that's re re produced by the car package. And when we look at this plot, we are looking for symmetry in what happens above the zero reference line and what happens below the zero reference line. And at least for me, when I look at this plot, I don't see any systematic deviation from symmetry as I compare what happens above to what happens below. So this plot doesn't indicate to me any real evidence of uh, that the mean zero error assumption is violated. If I had instead used the plot function on my fitted model and specified which equals one, then base R would produce this graphic, which is very similar, though uh, it's styled slightly differently. And we also have this line right here, which is essentially a low S smoother. And what that's doing essentially is some sort of special uh, local linear regression as we move from left to right along the X axis. And that line, we want it to be closer to the horizontal reference line at zero. Um, this is not gonna be perfect because we have some observations out here that are leverage points, which uh, there's not a lot of information in that area, and so the line gets pulled up as we move to the end of the, uh, of the X axis there. Um, but when I compare that red line to the horizontal line at zero, I don't see any really concerning patterns. And I'll be honest, when I, I actually don't like having that reference line on there because I feel like it can influence your opinion too much as you look at the graph. We're looking for really systematic deviations from symmetry, and I just don't see it uh, with this plot. If I wanted to compare the residuals to the different predictor variables, I would use the residual plots function, and that and the car package would produce these, this set of four plots. And so I'm gonna look at every single one of these graphics, and once again, I'm looking for systematic deviations from symmetry as I compare what happens above the zero line to what happens below the, the zero line. And none of these plots are gonna be perfect. So for example, when I look at this little section right here, I notice there's a little bit of asymmetry in the residuals in comparison with that reference line, but I don't see any systematic patterns that are clearly a violation of the mean zero error assumption. And so when you look at these plots, it's not just that there's some deviation from symmetry, but that there's an obvious systematic asymmetry of the residuals in comparison with that horizontal reference line at zero. And just uh, because it was a little, a little bit vague there in terms of how I got these graphics uh, in R, let's actually just look at our commands here. So before, before I construct these residual plots, the first thing I have to do is I need to load the car package, which is what I do right here. So I use the library function to load car. As you saw in the previous slides, I then load my data using the data function. I fit my model using the LM function and store that as an LMOD object. And now I want to construct my first residual plot, a plot of the residuals versus fitted values. So I use the residual plot function, I give it the LMOD object, and I specify quadratic equals false. So by default, that function actually produces a quadratic fit to the plot, which I didn't want to see. So specifying quadratic equals false simplified the plot. So there is a plot that we saw, there's a plot that we saw in the previous, in the previous slides. To use base R graphics to do the same thing, I use the regular plot function on my LMOD object. I specify which equals one to get the right plot from the function. And there's another plot of the residuals versus the fitted values. Lastly, if I wanted to plot the residuals versus the different predictors, I use the residual plots function, though I did specify some additional arguments to customize it a little bit. So I specified quadratic equals false so that none of the plots had the quadratic line. I specified fitted equals false because I had already created a plot of the residuals versus fitted values, and that command will suppress that plot from being produced by the car package. And I also specify test equals false. So this function by default does some tests for curvature and also does two keys tests for non-additivity by default. I didn't want that information when I was constructing this, so I specified test equals false. And so if I run that command, then I see plots similar to what we saw on the previous slides.